Rudyard Fun runs a funeral home in the village of Piffling Vale. It used to be the only one. It isn't anymore. And though the village has never been happier, one woman still toils in her mortuary, alone and forever unloved. But today was the day she did something about it. Today was the day Antigone Fun discovered flirting. Wooden Overcoats, created by David K. Barnes. Episode 5. She Stoops to Conquer, by T.A. Woodsmith. The morning had seemed ordinary enough. I awoke, stretched my weary paws, crept out from the hole in the skirting board and wandered into the kitchen to gather the crumbs of Rudyard's toast at the foot of the breakfast table. Oh, God. Oh, good God. Antigone, I can't believe my eyes. Antigone? Mm. Can't believe it at all. I can't believe what I'm reading in the slightest. Antigone? I think the milk is off. Antigone, pay attention. Ask me what's up or something. Why on earth, dear brother, should I want to? Well, that's what normal people do. Every newspaper's at breakfast in the morning. Since when have we been normal? Ask me what's wrong! What's wrong, Rudyard? <sighs> Since you ask, on Tuesday I'd just finished burying Mr Orton and I was walking along thinking, Ah, Mr Orton, he oughtn't to have done that. Oughtn't to have stepped under that dangling piano. Silly place to leave a landmine. And whose face slimed out of the newsagent's Eric the Scallywag Chapman. Scallywag. Drang out monikers. And who should he happen to be walking out with but dear old Sally Topping? <sighs> I've been eating that woman's disgustingly dry flapjacks for almost a decade to try and secure her funeral. And take a look at today's piffling matters. Will it be a leap year you decide? Not that! <laughs> that! Oh. Chapman and Topping make quite the pair at the very first Take Your Horse to Water Day parade. Five minutes for Chapman. It's all it took. Rudyard. Do you know how many flapjacks a man can eat in a decade? Rudyard, perhaps you should be getting out there, doing the rounds of it, being nice to people. <laughs> I hardly think we need a gimmick like that. Morning. Good morning, Georgie. No, I was thinking of morning with a U in it. Could be our new catchphrase like, morning, it's for you, or morning. Of course you are. Your dog's dead. Astonishing. Grace at slogans. Kettle boiled? Knock yourself out. Just look at his sulphurous face smirking out of the old hag. He has very nice skin. Looks like it would stretch well, good for open casket. He moisturises every morning. Told me that on a date we have. Hmm. Can't bear it. I simply can't. I'm, I'm going to have you to You haven't dated him since? Just... No. And, too high maintenance. And dignity. Interesting. Why? Oh, no reason. Shut up. Georgie! Is this milk off her? I think it's off. Someone! Pass me the jam, Roger. You'll we'll die alone. Very likely, but I'd still like the jam, please. Callous. That's what you are. Our mother must have birthed you in a freezer. Stop scowling. You even scowled when you were born. Georgie, isn't she always scowling? All I want is some peace and quiet before a full day's work. Is that so much to ask, is it? Has anybody got the sugar? Work? Fiddling with an embalming machine? At least when I do it, I don't flood the whole building. Don't worry, I found it. I'm doing the hard graft. Conducting services, booking appointments, nurturing friends. And what friends? One mouse. No offence, Madeline. Well, at least I have a friend. What about you? All the faces in your life are stiff with rigor mortis. That's it. If I wanted to feel terrible, I'd talk to myself. Antigone? I'm going to my mortuary. Oh, come on. There's no need to get strong. <sighs> Damn you, Chapman. Now you're even ruining our breakfast. This sugar tastes funny. It's not sugar, it's Mrs. Forrester. We ran out of ferns. There's almond in this. Antigone darted straight for the mortuary. I helped myself to a glob of jam and nipped after her. Why do I bother? Why am I still here? Why? I could go out somewhere and meet someone. Just because I have no reason to doesn't mean I couldn't. Who's up first? Miss Amelia Lonesome, 86. Advanced decomposition due to extended period before discovery. Well, Miss Lonesome, 
I see you choked to death on a tiny pineapple and were left alone for several weeks, which is why you're decomposing. Because nobody found you for weeks. Because you lived entirely, entirely... Oh, oh God, Rajah's right. I'm going to die alone. All this time I thought I was being discerning, but I've been going about it all wrong. I want to be appreciated. I don't want to be alone. Well, well, I'm not going to be alone. You hear me, Miss Lonesome? It's time to put myself out there. Be bold, be brave, no more scowling, no more misery. Henceforward I'll be open and bright and the sort of woman that Eric Chapman would... Oh, God, does that mean I have to be like Georgie? No, I shall out Georgie, Georgie, yes! I better ask Georgie how to do that. Meanwhile, Rudyard, taking Antigone's advice, had embarked on a desperate quest to curry favour with the locals. He'd bought every loaf of bread in the Piffling Bakery, taken cups of tea to every workman on the island, and passed several squirrels without yelling at any of them. I found him at the Piffling Golf Club, slowly sinking into the bunker. Now look here, Madeline. Mayor Desmond Desmond never misses a round of his Tuesday midday golf. Not even inclement weather can stop him. Well, it might skew his aim a bit, but I bet he'd still get here. Need to get back into his good books after that flipping faint fiasco. One day, that man's funeral will be the biggest on Piffling, and I'm going to be conducting it if it's the last thing I ever... Do. Good oh, morning, oh. Rudyard. Ah, good morning, Mayor Morning. Uh, I don't wish to worry you, but is that a mouse in your pocket? Yes, don't you have one? No. But I'll soon change that. Anyway, didn't know you were a golfing chap. Oh, yes, love golf. Fantastic. Game. Yeah, and what do you par? Well, almost everything. Yeah, I mean, what's your handicap? I'll tell you, I was born this way. Well, I play off four myself. How about you? I play off um, 86. Good God, I hope I'm not behind you. Are you here alone, Your Worship? Why? What are you offering? Oh, I just wanted to remind you of the fine services that we provide at fun funerals. Oh, and have a box of chocolates. Gosh, thank you, but... Uh, I am meeting someone, actually. Oh. Yes. Your friend, smashing chap, fantastic golfer. You should see his long iron. My friend? Yes! Eric Chapman, you introduced us. My friend? You know, tall, handsome, confident chap. Runs the funeral home opposite yours. Yes, I know! Oh, dear, I'm terribly sorry. Pete, Pete, don't hit me! Morning, all. Harry, thank God. Oh, I didn't know you were a golfer, Rudyard. Nice plus fours. It was what, exactly? Horrible. What? Uh, I, I say, we should probably play on through, shouldn't we? It's sunny now and everything. Not sure thing, Deza. <gasps> Deza! Your worship. I... Uh, lovely talking to you, thingy. Uh, let's do it again soon. Enjoy yourself, Rudyard. I hope you're wearing golfing socks. Golfing socks? They're the pair with a hole in one. <laughs> Very good. Mm. Do you fancy a jockey? Oh, ta. Damn it! Dum, 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 dum! Rudyard Fun, is that you, chap? Go away, I'm having a moment. Rudster, it's me, Seymour. How you doing, fella? Seymour? See me, Seamster? Seymour, come up and see me. I can make you a millionaire. Look, I've just made two and a half standing here talking to you, Profit. Seymour Profit? You've come back. Knew you'd remember. Your father put mine in the ground all those years ago. Quietly and no questions asked, if I recall. Very sporting of him. He was haunted by guilt for the rest of his life. That's the fella. Anyway, I just pop back to see the family, laugh at some old friends, that sort of thing. You keeping up? You look kind of, well, awful. Thank you. Your legs must be very cold in that kilt. So cold? Why is no one else wearing one? I thought everyone wore tartan. I can't talk. I'm in my whites. If they don't like you down at the club, I'll just buy the place. See if they don't let me play golf in my underpants then. Ha! Right. How about a game? Tiger cancelled last minute. What's your handicap? I was born this way. Look, I'm having a terrible day. I can't feel my knees. I'm going home. Shame. And besides which, I've always found you to be the most unethical, nauseous. You see, I'd appreciate the company. Old Granny Profit isn't doing too well at all. Completely brilliant sporting companion. Oh dear, poor Granny, how is she? Really bad, poor thing. Really bad. Four! Oh! I'm so extremely sorry. What are you talking about? That was a hole in one. Your grandmother. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, very sad. Yeah, really last legs kind of stuff. Fancy a swing? Oh, uh, yes. Um... What? Hard luck. My favourite window! I don't want to sound insensitive, Seymour, but may I take this opportunity to remind you of the fine services we offer at fun funerals? Not at all. I respect that. 
I'll cut to the chase with you rudders, because I've always liked you. Really? No, that's just something I say. But Granny profits on her way out, and I haven't spent two decades getting filthy rich just to spend it all on women, Lamborghinis, and an incredibly heavy pocket watch. Oh, can I touch it? No. When the olive hits the martini, when it's time for the ones you love, you've got to give something back. And I intend to do that with lots and lots of cash. Lots is my favourite mm. number. Yeah. Got to run, Rudy. A client wants to buy the Isle of Man. But listen, why don't I swing by your place this afternoon, see what you can offer? I love you. It's only human. See you, Rudy. Oh, and you better whip out your checkbook. I think the chairman of the club wants a word about that window. Rudyard clicked his heels, hollered for joy, paid off an irate golf club chairman and cartwheeled home to prepare a funerary package for his new client. Meanwhile, in the mortuary... In you pop, Georgie. Make yourself at home. You've never asked me now on air before. Yes, well, I thought you should see the nuts and bones of what I do here. Nuts and bones? That's a joke, but you're not meant to laugh. Don't touch anything. Uh-huh. Just put on that apron and the plastic shoe covers like I'm wearing. What are they for? We're embalming people, Georgie. There's a lot you can step in. Today we're working on Miss Lonesome here. She's a little bit squishy, but don't take any notice. Cool. First, we're going to set the features. Make sure she's not winking at anyone during the ceremony. All right? Good. Do you have a boyfriend? What? Sorry, is that too personal? Uh, no, no. Single at the moment. And have you done a lot of that? Having boyfriends? Yes. Yeah. I've had tons. Great relationships. Excellent. So tell me, if you will, how one might go about... <coughs> what the hell are you doing? I'm asking you about attracting the opposite... sex. I meant with that dead woman's leg. Oh, we're just flexing the limbs to relieve tension. It allows the embalming fluid smooth and easy passage. So, do you have a formal courtship ritual or what? Uh, yeah. Well, it's flirty, I suppose. Until they really fancy me and then we start dating. I see, I see, yes. This isn't about Eric, is it? Wait, no. What? Well, you asked me this morning if me and him were dating. It's got nothing to do with Chapman. How could it? You're ridiculous. Don't be silly in the mortuary. Okay, okay, okay. This is purely hypothetical. Now, how does one flirt? Well, I guess you've got to pretend that you feel really sexy, so you're letting them know that you're a really sexy woman. Pass the scalpel. Oh, that's a bit full on for an opening gambit, but you might be into that. No, pass me the scalpel. Oh. Sorry. (sighs) Okay. You've got to smile all the time, like you're just really happy to gaze into his lovely eyes. And you've got to move languidly, you know, like a warm, sexy river. And you have to laugh at everything he says, but a really sexy laugh. You're saying sexy a lot. Oh. And you must say the name all the time. That's really important. I read about it. It's science, so it's definitely true. And this works, does it? Probably. I've never done it. People just like me. Do you want to give it a go? No. Just pretend I'm Eric. It's got nothing oh, to... Whoever, slink over to me and gaze into my eyes and use my name a lot and ask questions about me. That's really important, probably. All right. Uh, let me just warm up the embalmer. Right. And sexy river. Ah, oh, hello, Georgie. Good. How are you, Georgie? Good. And now laugh. <laughs> that was a dolphin. Maybe try and make it a little gentler, like this. <laughs> Think a bit more angels and babbling brooks and frolicking spring lambs in a gazebo. <laughs> <And> again. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm almost seduced myself. Whilst Antigone practised her spontaneous laughter, in the next room, Rudyard was deep in negotiations. So you see, Seymour, you can have a coffin painted any colour you want, so long as it's brown. Amazing. And the fur lining wouldn't be a problem? No problem at all. And you're sure you could do the bubble cannons and go-go girls? Oh, we can look into it. In the church? The vicar's very liberal. Hmm. Strange request, I know, but Grandmama was always a bit of an eccentric. We we bloody loved her for that. (laughs) Watch out for the velvet... Wait, I thought she hadn't died yet. Uh, what? Uh, y- yeah, well, I mean, she probably has by now. We've been here a while. 106 years old, she was. Well, do sit down. Would you like a coffee? We rented a kettle a few weeks ago. Or maybe some brandy. Oh, Christ, no. Never touch any of that. Do you 
juice? Not consistently. Oh, shame. People love juices. Shall we go over payment options? And smoothies. And have a look at some contracts. You know, the man over the road has put a juice bar in. You've been there. Yeah, decent bloke, that Chapman. Said he'd give a free smoothie to all of Granny's guests at the funeral. You've been to Chapman's. Solar power, too. You know, Rudy, I think that his ideals and mine might be more aligned. No, 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 no. Look, we, we haven't even talked about the complimentary foam fingers and, um, inflatable chairs. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. No, 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 you've got to go with us. We'll throw in a kettle. It's very nearly ours. Why do I hear shouting? Oh, uh, Seymour Profit. Pleased to meet you. And I think very pleased to leave. Ta-ta. Antigone, do something. Uh, um, oh, Seymour. I'm sorry, what did you say your name was, Seymour? Uh, it's Seymour. Seymour. I love that name, Seymour. It's so sexy. <laughs> what? Do you like your name, Seymour? I've never really... It makes me feel all smiley. <laughs> What's she doing to your face? Your mouth's all bendy. Seymour, it was so nice to meet you, Seymour. Yes. I hope I'll uh, see more of you. <laughs> She's gone mad. Do excuse me, I have some light spring gardening to do. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so sorry, Antigone, I didn't see you there. Chapman, let me help you up. No, what, where am I? How are you feeling? Chapman, look, it's Chapman. <laughs> I think she may have concussion. Uh, yes. How oh, sexy. <laughs> Her face seems to be contorting. Can you lift your left arm up over your head? Uh, like this? <laughs> I don't think she suffered any cranial trauma, but you can never be too careful. What are you, a doctor? I studied medicine at Oxford. Of course you did. I've simply got to go, Chapman. I must do some light spring gardening. <laughs> Dear God. I'm fine. I'll just... Climb out of this coffin. I'll be, um, I'll be gone. Incredible. I'm sorry about that, Seymour. Do you think she'll be all right? Well, let you know. Off you go. Well, Seymour, you left your Chapman's DVD and vitamin-enriched smoothie over at mine. Oh, I don't think I'll need a marigold stick. I'm proud to say I'll be going with fun funerals. Really? really? I mean, yeah, sure, that's, well, more power to you, but... Really? Yes, well, you heard the man. Off your pop, chap man. Oh, OK, yes. Um, Seymour, could you give us any idea as a clue or anything as to why? Enjoy yourselves. Seymour, may I say what a clever and discerning choice you've made today. What going... a woman. Excuse me? The one who prowled in. Antigone. Oh, Antigone. What a name. What a woman. The transparent one who just fell into a coffin. Oh, she's ravishing. Are you sure you mean Antigone? I feel all relaxed, like a warm, sexy river. Are you sure you don't mean Chapman? I can't think why I've not met her before. Well, she usually hides in the mortuary. Absolutely enchanting. <gasps> Seymour, would you like my sister to deal with you from now on? Oh, God, yes! Set me up! I'd do right by her, Rudy. She's like a gorgeous, precious fox of a jewel. Well, I meant she could do you a funeral, but... If she's involved, you've got my business for life. I want to see a lot more of her. Like dinner tonight. Gosh, well, yes. Awesome sauce. I'll come by to pick her up at seven. And Rudy, call me the Sea Meister. That takes longer to say than Seymour. You've earned it. I've done it! I've done it! I've beaten Chapman! <laughs> ah! And all I had to do was arrange a romantic evening between my sister and. Oh, yes, this can be rather awkward. Have they gone? Ah, Antigone. Yes, now you might well be suffering a stroke. But regardless, I think it's time for you to take a more client-friendly role in the business. You mean front of house? Yes. I thought I was strictly downstairs. Well, as it turns out, you seem to have a knack with certain people. Really? Your face is doing that thing again. I'm smiling. Yes, well, save it for later. You see, that man, Seymour Profit, is very rich. And his grandmother is very ill. Or possibly dead. And so I thought it'd be a wonderful idea if you could take him out for dinner tonight. Dinner? Yes. Standard practice. I do it with all my potential clients. No, you don't. I do it when you're not looking. You've never taken anyone out for dinner in your whole life. Nor have you. So why should I start now? Because this one funeral could make us enough money to keep us going for a whole year. Think about it. I am, and I won't. Antigone! No! You know, if we had that income... We might be able to talk about the automatic embalmer's friend, 3,000. <gasps> the 3,000. Do you know how many litres of fluid it can suck out in half an hour? I'm sure it's disgustingly impressive. So let me know if you change your mind. It's just one dinner. Um, maybe. 
What am I thinking? He nearly convinced me. I can see through you, you know. I'm not a concubine. I said go for it. Ah, Georgie, didn't see you there. I'm great at not seeing you there. Hey, see me here. Ah, let me do that again. Never mind that. Rajad wants me to take a client out to dinner tonight, and I sense an undercurrent. This is exactly why I never leave the mortuary. How did the flirting go? Honestly, I've no idea. I did use his name a lot, but then I also fell into a coffin. It's powerful stuff you're flirting. I think you're ready for the next lesson. There's more. A whole world more. And then all you need is practice, which is exactly why you should go out to dinner tonight. I should. Got nothing to lose. You'll never see him again if it goes wrong. And if it goes right... I could woo him just enough to get his business, and then I'll be the victor at both love and commerce all on my own terms. Yeah, I guess. Then that's exactly what I'll do. Teach me, Georgie. You are my sensei. I must learn to control this unwieldy, sexy river that flows within me. You shall, my apprentice. You shall. Take your hand off my shoulder. No. Antigone made her seven o'clock rendezvous with Seymour at the Piffling Yacht Club's Mexican night. <clears throat> and so our two little lovebirds, our sombreros d'amour, I'm Mexican, settled in for the evening. Antigone's flirting resolve was strong like the bull, but... Oh, who was it that sat at a nearby table? Let us find out, my little quesadillas. I'm pretty chuffed you agreed to come, Antigone. I can tell you're not an easy catch. Well, Seymour, I was happy to come, Seymour. Tell me, Seymour, why do they call you Seymour, Seymour? I guess so that I could uh, see more of you. <laughs> I used that joke earlier. What's that? I mean, you're so funny, Seymour. <laughs> My God. Have you always been this beguiling, Antigone? Oh, maybe, yes. <laughs> my, my. I don't understand the menu at all. No hablas espanol? Cariño, dejame ensenarte. You're so clever, Seymour. Where did you learn to speak Spanish? Ah, my poor little dove, that's Mexican. Because this is a Mexican restaurant. Well, they do speak Spanish alongside the indigenous languages like Zapotec, Totonac, or Maya. I did some research for Ha! Zapotec! You're so kooky! You know, I feel thrilled and excited by your zany exuberance, but not at all threatened. Oh, Wait a minute. Look who's here! Huh? Seymour, Antigone, what a funny surprise! Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God! Chapman, you stunning old tosser! Isn't she the finest woman you ever met? <laughs> She's certainly unique. And you both know Mayor Desmond Desmond, my guest of the evening, Seymour, because I'm really quite highly thought of around here. No tits, don't care. Oh. Hello, everyone. I see this Mexican's ultra exciting, isn't it? Oh, lady! Oh, dear, I hope that wasn't offensive. Have you had a look at the menu, Desa? I'm afraid I don't always read everything I'm given. You're usually kept very busy, yes. Mm. Well, we'll get our table. You need to enjoy yourselves. Oh, defo, with this little cracker to keep me company. Little what? And Seymour, if you wanted a word at all about, you know, funerals and that kind of thing. I think I'll be fine, chap. Oh, yep, sure. Try not to, uh, spit out your food too far, Chapman. I... I won't. I just meant, because you're so close, within spitting distance, which is a phrase, and you'll be eating, so I just... It was just... just a bad joke. My dub's had a Bloody Mary already, chaps. <laughs> <laughs> Waitress, more alcohol, please. Let's order food, too, shall we? Waitress? Buenas noches, senor. See? Si? Mexican. Yes, OK, well, I'd like to have... Yeah, we'll both have the uh, El Mexican platter to start. Oh, por supuesto, senor. And then one El Fish and one El Chicken with chips. Si, sí, senor. With chips. Gracias. I liked her moxie. Tiggy? What? You keep gazing over at Eric's table. So, I wanted to keep a mouse in my pocket, but all I could find was this toad. Suits you. So, Seymour, my brother said you worked in finance? I'm a rich man who keeps rich men richer. Tax avoidance. That's the name of the game. Keep it quiet. Why? Because people with a lot of money want to keep it. That's kind of their slogan. Can't they afford to pay? Let me cut you off, you poor deluded fox. Economics is a bit more mucho complicado than that. See, my current client made an absolute packet in the 90s working with Donatella and Heroin Chic, invested everything in North London props, and now he's looking to bring it over here to keep it away from Auntie Taxman. Comes to me, I save him 2.5 million, pocket 10% myself, jobs are good at. That's sweet. Sweet profit, you mean. Ha! 
What else can I tell you? I think that's everything. Hobbies, of course. Here's a list. Tennis, swimming, golf, croquet, cricket, lacrosse. Right. Badminton, boo, downhill skiing. That's very... Not done. Cross-country skiing, ice skating, shooting. Shooting? And grouse, rabbits, whatever's in season. Oh, God. Oh, come off it, Tiggy. You deal with death every day. If you're getting a tiz over a dead rabbit, how could you possibly spend an afternoon stuffing my auntie? Grandmother. Uh, that's it. Yeah, she's, she's really fading fast, you know. I won't see out the month. Weak heart runs in the family. Still, she's promised me her estate when she goes, so uh, that should soften the blow. Huh? Yes. It's a lonely life, my you, Desa. Oh, I thought the girls were beating down your door. There's someone I have my eye on. Tiggy? She works at fun funerals. Tiggy? Sorry, I'm not quite... Not the sister. You're doing it again. Oh, and Antigone? Oh, no, 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 no. no. Tiggy! Don't get me wrong, nice woman. Not my type at all. Talented, mind you. Oh, immense. Hmm. Tiggy, you're doing that thing again where you're not looking at me. Oh, no, I see more. You know what? We seem to fit, don't you think? We've got the same interests. We found the same things funny. Tell me, Seymour, have you considered open casket? I can do quite wonderful things. Chimmy Chandra? No, thanks. You know, many people are concerned about revealing their loved one after death. It can be a very therapeutic experience. Guacamole? It's made of grass. Not now. I don't think we really need to bother with any of that seeing the body stuff. Who cares? Just chuck her in the ground. Job done. You've just rubbished my entire discipline. Discipline? Down girl. I'd be much happier if you'd let me embalm her properly. Uh, no, 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 no. You, you don't need to see her. Why not? Uh, my auntie was a very private person. Grandmother? Yeah, look, my relatives are dropping like flies. Seymour, what's going on here? You can't remember who you're burying, whether they're dead yet. You won't let me see the body. You do want us to bury a body, don't you? What? Or would you rather we didn't look into things too much in case we rang up Auntie Taxman? Shh, keep your voice down. What's really going to be in that coffin? The kind of money that dreams are made of. Just a little something for a rainy day, and you could come in for a pretty packet yourself if you just keep still. <coughs> anyway, that's enough chat. Right, where do you fancy doing it? Doing what? You know, kick things up a notch. Hotel room or back at the Lamborghini? The Lamborghini has seat belts. Oh! Ow! That's it. The smiley charade ends now. Dear God, what's happened to your face? It's called a scowl, Seymour. Why are you doing it? At me? Because you're a corrupt, sleazy, arrogant wretch. And as if that weren't enough, you're trying to get me involved in a... Tax scam, of course! Chapman? That's why he wants to go with your lot. It's a tax scam. Oh, it makes so much sense now. Yes, thank you, Chapman. That has been bothering me all day. Ha uh-huh. Ah, oh, as you were. No, don't leave me with her. Don't be scared, Seymour. I'm going home. But before I go... Mexico has 68 indigenous languages, and they're all in use alongside the most popular language, which is not Mexican, but Spanish. And guacamole is made of avocados. Goodbye! Do you know, Eric, I think Piffling ought to have 68 languages. I'd sleep on it if I were you, Des. Exactly. The walk back to fun funerals was brisk indeed, and Antigone was relieved to return to her mortuary. And one day... You'll meet someone who likes everything about you. And you'll scowl at him every day. And you'll be deliriously happy together. (sighs) Sounds very romantic. Georgie, what are you still doing here? Rudyard's feeling a bit emotional. The yacht club called and said you're banned from ever going back. (sighs) Now there's injustice. I yell at a loathsome pervert and I'm the one who gets banned. The date was a disaster. Your advice was ridiculous. I am who I am, and if I do die alone, at least I'll be able to live with myself. Mm, nearly made sense. But you haven't heard. Heard what? I'm oh, it's you. Why do you all suddenly think it's acceptable to invade the mortuary? I see from your scowl you're back to your old ways. Don't give me that, Richard. You manipulated me, used me, and if I ever see Seymour again... Oh, that's very unlikely. I'm glad. He died ten minutes ago. What? How? Why have you yelled at him and gave him a cardiac arrest? You failed to get the funeral. You kill off the client I sent you to see in the middle of a public yacht club. And you do it whilst Eric, the two-rag Chapman, our greatest competitor, is sitting at the next table eating tapas, ready to swoop in as soon as you leave the building. Do you have anything to say? Oh, stuff it, Rudyard. It was a con. Seymour wants us to bury millions of pounds in a tax fiddle. Antigone, are you telling me that a very rich man tried to give us a coffin full of money and you prevented him? You don't sound convinced. <laughs> Where are we take back the kettle? <sighs> you didn't actually kill Seymour, you know. No? He groped the waitress trying to help him and she stabbed him through the eye with a piñata stick. 
Oh my. I hope she took her time. <laughs> Antigone didn't come out of her mortuary for several days, finally emerging to pay her respects at the funeral of Ms Lonesome, who was buried with quiet dignity next to the churchyard's old oak tree. Tensions were running very high in fun funerals, and pretty soon they were going to run even higher. She Stoops to Conquer was written by T.A. Woodsmith and featured Felix Trench as Rudyard, Beth Eyre as Antigone, Tom Crowley as Eric, Kira Baxendale as Georgie, Steve Hodson as the Mayor, Max Aleska as Seymour and Belinda Lang as Madeline, with additional voices by Pip Gladwin, Sarah Burton and Max Tyler. Original music composed by James Whittle. The programme was recorded at the Art Space Studios by Tom Gillieran and was directed and produced by Andy Goddard and John Wakefield. This is Wooden Overcoats, the most amusing, the most exciting, the most heartbreaking audio sitcom about the funerary practice there has ever been <laughs> so far. <laughs> On behalf of the production team, thank you, and we do apologise. Hello again. I'm John. And I'm Andy. And we're back. Hello. Uh, and of course, you would have just heard our names. We are the directors and producers of Wooden Overcoats. The sitcom. The sitcom. And thank you so, so much for listening. We really hope you're enjoying it. Yeah, cheers. We want to thank you, all of you who've left us a review, who've written about us online, who told your friends. You... The wonderful people at Radio Guernsey, Radio Jersey. We've just conquered the real-life Channel Islands. Yeah, the real piffling is currently awash <laughs> in wooden overcoats. Fans. We've now had more listeners, more downloads, more fuss. Listen, I've got a dynamite story here about a cat with twins. <laughs> It's going to cost you a lot to bump that off the front page sometimes. <laughs> it's for 500 pounds. It's only down to you guys telling people about us and letting them know we exist. Without you doing that, there's no way this can reach new people. We also have another little thing going. The Wooden Overcoats live shows here in London. At the Horse and Stables pub near Waterloo. It's nice and central, it's easy to get to if you're a Londoner. Pop down. If you're not a Londoner, get a flight. Get over there and sabotage something! Sorry, I keep getting sorry. You're always standing in the shadows. The shadows protect me. Get out! Get yourself some drinks, repopulate the species, but whatever you do... (laughs) Don't forget us. Because we, sir, will never forget you. I hope you enjoy the rest of Wooden Overcoats. <laughs> clip of David. I will just keep the words clip of David <laughs> in at that point. <laughs> Cue David. <laughs>